All right, everyone, welcome back. So we continue on in the um, State of the Division series with the Metropolitan Division. We did the Atlantic yesterday. Um, we got all three today because um, my dumbass decided to not make any and had a very busy weekend. So uh, it's on me. But regardless, we we'll have three today. So nice treat for y'all, including the AHL series. So I guess four videos. Regardless, uh, the Metropolitan has been very interesting um, not just this season, but as of late. There's a lot of teams in it that are actually kind of struggling right now. There's a few teams that are doing well, but a lot of them are struggling. And this is a division through a lot with a lot of really stacked NHL teams. So there are going to be a few rosters that probably missed the playoffs this year in this division. Especially, too, with the Atlantic being really competitive as it is. Uh, there are going to be some teams that miss. So, we'll start with the New York Rangers at number one. The Rangers are currently 30, 16, and 13 for 63 points. Uh, they are 4, 5, and 1 in their last 10. And I'm not going to deny, there's been a lot of concerning um, signs with the Rangers right now. Um, they are, as I, obviously, they're 4, 5, and 1 in their last 10. Things have been concerning. Um, they've been losing a lot recently. And I don't really know what to make of it. I feel like a lot of it might be just defensive woes and a lot of mental issues with this team. I feel like they're still a really good NHL roster. I feel like they're a really good team. I feel like a lot of it, though, is mental. That might be the biggest thing with this Rangers roster. Uh, Panarin leads the, leads the uh, team here with 49 games played, 30 goals, 36 assists for 66 points. And in net, you have Igor Shosturkin. Uh, with 32 games played, 19, 12, and 1 record, a 2.86 goals against average, and a 0.899 save percentage. Now, Shesterkin's numbers aren't as great as they usually are. I think a main factor for that might be because uh, the scoring seems to be up. One thing I've noticed with doing these videos is a lot of the goalies, not just uh, Shesterkin, have worse numbers than usual. It, it's a little bit weird uh, with how a lot of these goalies have save percentages. It's, it's actually pretty interesting but yeah the rangers um i probably will make a video on them soon individually talking about trade deadline stuff um but definitely the rangers are a team that hopefully after this all-star break uh they will have pulled out of this struggle that they're in uh number two though is a team that's doing very well and is actually catching up to the rangers but the rangers are getting just enough points to stay in first it's the carolina hurricanes the hurricanes are currently 28 15 and 5 for 61 points, they are 7-2-1 Excuse me, in their last 10. Um, Carolina's been great. There were some mid there were some early season struggles that did affect this team, but they pulled themselves out of it. Um, and they are still a really high contender for the Stanley Cup. I really believe they are. Um, they've been really good, especially recently. Um, and I will talk about that in my trade deadline video soon. Uh, so Sebastian Ajo leads the team with 45 games played, 17 goals, 37 assists for 54 points. Ajo's been great this year. Um, there's no doubt about it. Ranta, I have as the goalie. Now, I know Ranta's not going to be the goalie. The goalie carousel is really weird in Carolina. It was Kachekov. Then Spencer Martin came in from waivers. And now Anderson's been cleared to play. So I'm assuming that they're going to figure this out soon. But it's probably looking like a Kachekov. I, I have no idea. I, I Honestly, I have no clue. I need to ask some of the Canes fans what they think. But Ranta is the goal that I have here. Uh, 23 games played, 12-7-2, a 3.04 goals against average, and a .870 save percentage. Yeah, uh, Ranta has been solid during some of these stretches. I know there's a little bit of a concern. He's probably not going to be the starting goalie or the backup goalie. Um, but just right now, Carolina has like four goalies in their system. So it's going to take a lot of figuring out before they are 100% uh, with the team that they want, of course. Um, number three is the Philadelphia Flyers. And I've said in videos before, this is the team that flipped this division upside down. Last year, it was pretty consensus. And heading into the season two, it was pretty consensus of a lot of what, of what a lot of the picks were going to be. It was going to probably be the Devils, the Hurricanes, and the Rangers. Now the Flyers, who have been really good this year, have flipped this flipped this division upside down. The Flyers, 25-19-6 for 56 points. They are 5-5-0 five, five oh in their last 10. So Philadelphia going through a little bit of a losing streak here um, to end off the season before the All-Star break. Um, and am I concerned a little bit? I think that they need to come out of this All-Star break and they need to be really effective. However, Tortorella has said in comments that I in fact read today 
um, that he is that they should not stray away from what they're doing. They should not look at these numbers and say that, oh yeah, the team's doing great and go and buy at the deadline. And I said that in videos. They should not do that whatsoever. Now, I think what they're doing right now is very smart. And if they want to go for a playoffs playoff push, I'm not against it as long as we don't give up assets to do that. Uh, Konechny is your leading scorer. 50 games played, 22 goals, 20 assists, 42 points. Urson is your goalie since Carter Hart is now out uh, with 25 games played, 12-9-3, a 2.60 goals against average, and a .898 save percentage. Um... So yeah, I mean, like, obviously, I have my concerns with Urson. That is a concern that I do have. With Hart being out, there were issues in Hart's play during the season, and I honestly kind of saw this coming. I was like, eh, he's been out for a little bit, and then he comes back. It doesn't look like the same Carter Hart that we knew. I feel like this has been looming over him all year, so it's not really a surprise that this happened. But Urson, there's been points this year where I've been like, yeah, he's a great starting goalie. There's been points this year where I'm like, get that guy out of the net. I, I honestly don't know what to think with Urson. Um, I don't know if he's a reliable goalie. I would like to think he is because I like Urson. I think he's I think he's a solid goalie. I just don't know if he's a playoff reliable goaltender. But obviously, if we're worrying about playoffs right now as a Flyers fan, you should be pretty happy with what we've done this year. But hopefully they pull, pull themselves out of this little slump that they're in uh, at this point in the season. Number four, uh, the New York Islanders. And the Islanders are one of those teams that the overtime points are what carrying them. And I'm sorry, Islanders fans, but that's the truth. The Islanders are 2017 and, and 12, 12 uh, this season with 50 points um, or 52 points, and they are 2 6 and 2 in their last 10. So recently has been a little bit of a struggle for the Islanders. Um, there's been some issues. They obviously fired Lane Lambert a few weeks ago and named Patrick Waz, a brand new head coach. Um, obviously, I like the move overall, but the impact since that move has not been great. Granted, there hasn't been a lot of games since then, but still, um, you want to see bigger of an impact. Now, I think this initial week after the All-Star game, we're going to start to see, oh, yeah, this is going to work out or this is not going to work out. We're really going to find out here. But the Islanders heading into the deadline, too, they don't have a whole lot of assets to move and then a lot of assets to give up. So definitely, I will track that in the trade deadline. But, you know, just right now, the team isn't looking too great. Noah Dobson leads the way here with uh, 49 games, excuse me, 49 games played, uh, six goals, 46 assists, uh, 52 points. I think Dobson's been great this year, has been an exceptional guy for the Islanders, getting a lot of assists, a lot of points. Um, I think he will be in the Norris conversation. I feel like he absolutely deserves to be in it. And then Ilya Sorokin, 35 games played, 14, 12, and 9 for a 3.17 goals against average and a .909 save percentage. I will say this, which should start with should start again, with Sirokin's numbers, sorry. Um, I feel like he has faced the most high danger chances in the NHL. I saw someone comment that stat on a post that I made about Sirokin. So definitely Sorokin's faced his fair share of high danger chances. But yeah, the Islanders have a lot to think about here heading into um, this second half of the All-Star break. Because I feel like they can be a playoff team. They play a system that is weird. I'm, I'm, And I know I say that in every single Islanders-related video, but it's just the truth. They play a really strange system. I don't know if Waz going to really change that system up a little bit here. We're going to really find out. But definitely, um, the Islanders' direction is going to be really determined um, probably on the second half of the All-Star season. So a very important time here uh, for the New York Islanders. Uh, number five, the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Penguins are currently 22-17-7 for 51 points. Uh, they are 4-3-3 three, and three in their last 10. So the Penguins winning enough games to stay in the hunt, winning enough games to stay in the race. Um, they're just a little ways behind right now. I feel like they are a playoff team. I, I really think they are. I think they're pretty pissed off because of the Islanders. If it weren't for the Islanders, the Penguins would be in a playoff spot right now. Um, but Pittsburgh doing everything they can to get points, fighting the way they can to get points and doing all that stuff. Uh, but Crosby leads the scoring here, 46 games played, 27 goals, 23 assists for 50 points. Uh, Crosby has been good this year. Like he usually is just not taking off the gas on not taking off, not slowing down is, is a better word for it. Sorry. And then Jari is uh, your goalie 32 games played 13, 14 and four. With a 2.53 goals against the average and a .913 save percentage. Jari's been good. Um, I've really liked Jari this season. Has been an underrated goalie. Has kept Pittsburgh in a lot of games. That's something I will say. He's done very well for Pittsburgh this year. But yeah, I feel like they are a playoff team. I feel like they're lacking some things. And I said this in the offseason. I said they are a playoff team, but they're not a cup team. That's just, that's just where they are right now, unfortunately. 
So, number six, the New Jersey Devils. The Devils have been another team that has been, I guess, disappointing in some ways. The Devils, 24-20-3 for 51 points. They are 3-6-1 in their last 10. Yeah, the Devils kind of struggling a little bit heading into this All-Star break. Um, I think that a lot of it is too, and I think that the biggest factor of if this team misses the playoffs is the injuries. There are a ton of injuries in Jersey right now. The good news is, though, Jack Hughes looks like he's going to come back soon. Hamilton, not so much. So they're going to have a lot of trade deadline options here and a lot of questions heading into the deadline, which I will cover in the video. Uh, Jesper Bratt leads the scoring. 47 games played, 19 goals, 31 assists, 50 points. Um, I think Bratt's a big name there. He's done really good for himself and has become a very underrated player in Jersey. And then he got Vanacek, 29 games played, um, 16-8-2, 3.24, and a .886 save percentage. Yeah, I think the biggest question that the Devils are going to face heading into this trade deadline, and I know I'm bringing it up a lot, but it's the next big thing. It's what a lot of teams are thinking about right now. Um, their biggest question is going to be the goalie or a defenseman. I think that's really where the Devils are going to look at. The problem is, though, the goalie market is not great. It, it really is not that great. Like, Ivan Prozvedov went on waivers. That's the best goalie we've seen on waivers in a while. So, it, it's definitely really tight right now. And we're, we're going to find out if the Devils make it. But they're losing a lot of games. And there's definitely a lot of man games lost. But I think Lindy Ruff could be the guy that faces the repercussions of that. If they miss the playoffs. Uh, number seven, the Washington Capitals. The Capitals are currently 22-18-7 for 51 points with a 4-5-1 record in their last 10. So the Capitals were up there for a while. They were like fourth in the division, third in the division. They were fighting with the Flyers, and then they got into a three-game losing streak. So they obviously have not played well over their last 10. Hopefully in this second half, they're in a really weird spot. They're in a weird spot where they're like, they're okay, but they're not a playoff team, or they're not a cup team necessarily. So that, that's an issue that they're going to have to face. But... Uh, Dylan Strome leads the scoring uh, with 47 games played, 19 goals, 12 assists, 31 points. Has been pretty solid this year. But obviously, um, with Strome, the Capitals have not seen a lot of scoring. Um, a lot of their games have been one-goal games. Uh, they're fighting a lot for those games. And a lot of their losses, too, have been three or more goals. So whether it's a close game, I would bet on Washington. If it's not a close game, then bet on the opposing team. That's my betting advice to you. Uh, and then Kemper's in net, 11-11-2 record, a 3.21 goals against average, and a .892 save percentage. Again, there's been a lot of goaltending carousels around the NHL. Um, the Capitals are one of them. I've seen Hunter Shepard come up, Charlie Lindgren, Kemper as well. So there's been multiple goalies that have gone through the system, and yet they'll play really well in Hershey and beat the Phantoms. So that's fun. Uh, but yeah, Washington... They need to get some wins under their belt. They need to get some points. And they need to hope that these teams above them uh, don't get some points. Because they're really still in it. They're tied with Pittsburgh, the Devils, and the Penguins. So, like, that's three teams right there that, like, are battling for a spot. And let's say Washington wins two games. Boom. They're tied. They're, they're fourth. So, that's how close this division is. It, it, it can change from week to week. Like, I've seen plenty of weeks where, like, the Flyers will go from third to seventh. And the, the Penguins will go from seventh to third. Like, it's just... It just depends on how teams do. And that's why at this point in the season, every game matters. Now, a team that really the games don't matter is Columbus. That's the only team in this division that is not in the race. Uh, 16, 24, and 10 for 42 points. They are 3, 5, and 2 in their last 10. Uh, their leading scorer is Johnny Gaudreau with 50 games played, 7 goals, 25 assists for 32 points. Uh, then your goalies, Elvis Merzlikens with 28 games played, 9, 10, and 7. Uh, for a 3.22 goals against average and a .903 save percentage. I have mentioned there are a lot of problems in Columbus. Um, I've made tech talks, numerous tech talks over the past couple of weeks on Pascal Vincent, David Juracek's situation, Fantilli getting scratched. Now he's hurt, obviously. But still, there's a lot of situations going on there in Columbus. I feel like it's getting better, but like I just really don't know. There's going to be some guys that Columbus could move, but there isn't a whole lot of names out there that players would want. I've seen Elvis Merzlikens be brought up. I know he's going to get brought up at the deadline. But I don't think that when you're looking for a goalie, Merzlikens is the guy that comes to mind. Because, let's face it, he's not the best goalie out there. He just isn't. So, obviously, we'll find out what happens there. But, yeah, that is my Metropolitan State um, at the All-Star break, or after the All-Star break at this point, I guess. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, make sure to leave a like. Hit that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate it. But, anyways... Uh, I will see you guys in the Central Division, which is up next. But anyways, thank you for watching.
and I'll see you guys next one. Adios. <laughs>